Hey, what's up everyone? So I'm building a gaming PC at the moment and this thing came in the mail. This is the Lian Lee Galahad AAO360. And I thought I would do a bit of an unboxing and then take a look inside and then talk about the AIO orientation of this thing because it seems like a lot of people on YouTube are talking about it. And I just wanted to chip in with my thoughts on the issue. And uh, as you may or may not know, I'm a civil engineer. So I've been a civil engineer for 15 years. And for five of those years, I was a water engineer. So I put a lot of pumps and pipe systems into the ground and I was a designer for those things. So uh, I wanted to, uh, I guess, take some of those principles that I learned in engineering and then talk about it in terms of an AIO system because largely the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. So uh, remember, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. All right, let's go ahead with the unboxing. And this is my first unboxing. So, um, you know, there could be mistakes. Uh, it might not come out as well as I wanted to. Uh, so please uh, bear with me. Uh, it pretty much is going to just be one take. So uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so... I haven't really looked much into it. So um, you get some instructions and uh, there's a bag of goodies here. So I'll try and put this. Um, so some thermal paste, some cabling for the RGB lights. Um, and I'll take a shot of this at the end uh, so you can see everything. Get some fan cables, get some screws. Get the Intel and AMD brackets for this. Um, this is the cover to go on top of the Lian Li uh, cooler. So if you don't want to show the Lian Li uh, name on the cooler or the pump, then you can put that on top. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is one of the RGB fans. Now this is the thing that we want to look at. This is the radiator and the tubing and the pumps. Hope I can get that all in the one shot. Man, that is a beast of a radiator. So that's really exciting. Okay. Yeah, I know like people like I, Justine, do really cool unboxings and um, I'm not really at that level yet. So you're going to have to excuse this amateur hack job. So it looks like this is the AMD bracket. Oh, and then on the other side it says Intel. So um, this side is for Intel and this side is for AMD. So this is a pretty big failure of an unboxing, but um, that's what it is. <laughs> and uh, the only reason I wanted to do an unboxing was to get this out so I could talk about the uh, all-in-one uh, orientation. All right, let's talk about the engineering principles behind an AIO cooler. So what we have here is a pump right here and the radiator system or the rest of the pipe system, as I like to call it, in this closed loop sys uh, system. So as you can see here, um, the water will get pumped at the pump. Uh, this sits on top of the CPU where it's hot. So the hot water will go into this radiator and get cooled by this radiator and the fans inside it. And then uh, it's gonna go back to the pump itself and then it's just gonna go round and round again to keep that uh, CPU cool. Okay, so um, normally people have problems with the AAO cooler because uh, they hear some sort of uh, gurgling noises 
uh, and that's most likely due to air bubbles inside the system uh, or they might get some sort of like pump wine. Well, that might be due to the pump actually working harder than it needs to because of those air bubbles. And also it could just be the fact that the pump uh, has uh, failed in some sort of mechanical way uh, because, you know, it's got moving parts. It can easily fail. Um, so sometimes it's not even how you set up this AIO. It's just that the pump isn't working as it's supposed to. And for those, you, yeah, you can definitely RMA it. But um, what you have here, right, is at the very least you want to eliminate those air bubbles inside your system. Now, uh, why are they actually in there in the first place is because they can't actually fill this to the brim uh, or they um, try to and you're still left with some air bubbles inside this thing. Or over time, uh, you do get some sort of like permeation inside the system where it just permeates into the material itself and uh, but that that takes a long time right that's like you know maybe three or four years down the road where you get that and then uh, you'll have to manually fill this up yourself i guess um so and there are some coolers that let you do that i don't know if you can do it with this lian lee but i know the be quiet pure pure uh, loop cooler you can do it uh, fill that up yourself so if you do that then surely um, you probably wouldn't be able to fill that to the brim but the other thing is also like inside the liquid, you may also get air bubbles inside those uh, in, inside that liquid. So you can never really get all of that air, those air bubbles out. And in the civil engineering field, what we have is like we have air valves uh, in the in our pipe systems to get that air out. So uh, that way we can maintain uh, the full diameter of our pipes. But here we, we don't have that. So uh, we are left to deal with those air bubbles inside this closed loop system. Now, in terms of AAO orientation, now the air is always going to, uh, I guess, um, float up to the top of the system. Um, so what you have is um, if you put this in a way where it, the air bubbles get to the pump, well, that's bad because the pump can't actually turn the air or push the air. The pump's not made to push the air because um, the air will just, I guess, if you think about it, it just kind of flows uh, around that uh, fan as it spins. So it's not really made for pushing air. The pump is actually made for pushing water. So um, you once, once you get air uh, near those fans, well, then you're starting to uh, get the pump working harder than it's supposed to and it just can't handle it right and then that's why you get louder noises you get gurgling sounds also your water flow or your flow rate inside the system slows down as well if you've got air near your pump but your cpu is going to get hotter because your flow rate of the water is going slower around the system so that's not good to um, get air into this uh, pump here itself. So whatever you do, uh, this cannot be the high point. Definitely don't put uh, your system where you have your radiator at the bottom and your pump at the top. Okay, so uh, this will for sure mean that all your air bubbles, even if there's uh, not very many air bubbles, but over time you may get a buildup of air bubbles uh, in your pump like this. So if you have it this way, um, this is the way that most uh, manufacturers of these AIO coolers will want you to have your system because that means that your air bubbles are spread out over the top of this radiator and therefore your pump is always submerged in that water or your fans or your propellers are submerged. So uh, this, is, this is good for your um, pump. So this is probably the best way to have it. But of course, not a lot of people, especially if you get a 360 AIO, can fit the 360 at the top as an exhaust. So um, what uh, a lot of people do is uh, they put it uh, at the front of their case as an intake, like, like this, I guess, or like this. Then the question becomes, well, do you have the um, tubing up or do you have the tubing down? And so this was, this, there was a lot of contentious debate about this and I saw some of the videos from Gamers Nexus and Jay's Two Cents and Greg Zalisa and um, you know all of them are correct because uh, as long as this pump is submerged then you're not going to really get those uh, gurgling sounds so if this is the top of your uh, 
radiator system or your pipe system, uh, then as long as your pump here is submerged, then it should be fine. Perhaps if you had it around the other way, uh, I guess with the barbs up, yeah, you could have it higher. So you don't you don't want to have it like that. Uh, a lot of people were talking about, well, should you have it up or down? And honestly, I don't think it matters either way, which way you do it, so long as your pump is in between your radiator system. Now, I guess Gamers Nexus could be slightly more correct because this here would be the furthest point from your pump. So if your air bubbles uh, collect up in here, well, this is the furthest from your pump and it's least likely for those air bubbles to get to your pump. So um, that that's probably why he recommended it like this. Now, if you have it like this, well, this is kind of closer to your pump. The air bubbles that collect up here are closer to your pump. So there is a chance that the air bubbles, well, more of a chance that the air bubbles could go back to your pump if it's closer to your pump. And uh, I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal because it's not like huge air bubbles are going to all of a sudden just get pushed into this pump. Uh, but uh, you could have it either way and I don't think it would be that much of a big deal. But I guess, you know, if you want, in terms of theory, um, what's the best case uh, for an AIO, then yeah, I, I would probably have it down if you can have this down, but a lot of cases and a lot of uh, radiators, the tubing's not long enough, so you wouldn't be able to do this. So that's about all I have to say about the AIO orientation. So just to conclude, you want the pump submerged some way in your system. Uh, so this is good, and this is good, and this is good, uh, but not where the pump is higher than the rest of your system. Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and if uh, you have any comments or any questions about this topic, make sure to comment down below and I'll try to get to all of your comments. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.